How you doing everyone? It's Kevin. I'm back with another video. I don't know if you guys seen it or not. We went to the Ramp Festival and you seen the guy that was making the deer antler mushrooms. And I thought that was so cool. And uh, first I asked the guy, I said, uh, do you mind if I put you on YouTube? He, he didn't care. But then I asked him how he cut the mushrooms. And he said, uh, I said, did you use a Dremel tool? And he's like, and you want to post that on YouTube? Well, yeah, I want to post it on YouTube. And I kind of knew that he used a Dremel tool on it before he even uh, verified that he did use the Dremel tool. So, you know, me in my head, it just works uh, kind of crazy. And I'm like, I can do this. So I went home and uh, carved my first mushroom. And I'll give you a close-up look at the mushroom. And uh, you've seen the prices on the mushrooms. Uh, he had, pr I mean, he wanted $20 for this mushroom with this ring on it. And that was just a key ring, uh, $20. Uh, so whether he was getting that out of them, uh, I don't know. But I do think there's potential here to make these and make a little bit of money off of them. Uh, I'm sure uh, somebody would like to have one of these little key ring mushrooms. But, um... I have some other ways, uh, some other things that, that he could actually benefit by watching my video on how to make money off of some of these mushroom carvings. So uh, I'm going to show you guys uh, what I have and I'm going to show you how to carve one of these mushrooms with uh, just a Dremel tool and a couple little bits. Uh, it doesn't take much for this to do this. Maybe a hacksaw, which I'll cut a deer antler for you on the bandsaw, but I'm sure you could use a hacksaw too. Uh, basically, a hacksaw, a Dremel tool, some sandpaper, and if you want to clear it. And I got some glue and some magnets I'll talk to you guys just a little bit later about. So let me give you a little close-up of uh, these mushrooms I was making and uh, show you just what I got to work with here. Of course you need your deer antlers, so you're going to have to come up with some deer antlers. Uh, you know, you see a deer dead along the road and got an antler on it, cut it off. I don't know if that's legal, but you can cut it off. Find them in the woods. Uh, a lot of times we'll walk through the woods and we'll find deer antlers in uh, the sheds. When they shed their antlers, we'll take them home with us. But uh, I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I'm using. Deer antlers. Dremel bits. I don't have a lot of Dremel bits. I don't use a lot of the Dremel, but mainly cutoff wheels. But uh, I got some two-part epoxy, and this is pretty cool here. I picked these up at Harbor Freight. They're the earth magnets, and uh, these things are great. So I was kind of incorporating these into my uh, little projects. And uh, of course, you need your Dremel tool and uh, a little paint and clear if you want, and uh, some tape. And I did go into Harbor Freight and pick up some new uh, Dremel bits here. I think it's like eight bucks. They're diamond bit blades, 20 piece. I don't know how they work, but uh, we'll get into that later. Uh, now here is some of the mushrooms that I had carved. This was my first one. And uh, that uh, didn't turn out, I think, too bad. And mushrooms are really different colors inside there. So, I wasn't crazy about the tan on this one, or the brown. I wasn't crazy about it. It looks too perfect. So, I might end up getting some tan, not instead of the dark brown, maybe some tan on this one, and just see what it looks like. And you can experiment with that all you, you know, however you want. And then this little guy here, this would be a nice little key ring. I've never seen a pointy mushroom like that, but that actually was found on a dead deer, a uh, spike buck. And that's literally his whole antler. Uh, that was his, the whole antler. I think I have the other one here somewhere too. Uh, so I thought that one was pretty cool too. That would make a nice little key ring uh, there. Or, you know, I've seen him, he had these mounted on plaques too. He had them mounted setting up on a plaque with maybe a ramp beside it or some grass or whatever, which would be cute. Uh, there's a lot of things you could do with these to actually make money, but one thing he didn't have was he didn't have this. Now I made one whole mushroom. You can put both of these guys together and it makes one mushroom. I made the mushroom just like so and then I cut it in half. 
and uh, I took one of them earth magnets and just drilled a small hole to countersink that in and uh, now if you take over the saw horse you can put it on your refrigerator which is I thought was pretty cool that might be a nice little thing somebody may want but uh, I don't honestly think that you should be getting that much money that he wanted for them out of them but uh, hey if he can get it he can get it that's fine uh, you would need some key rings if you was making these to sell and I've seen these online uh, I think you can buy them by the hundred or fifty or whatever pretty cheap not too expensive so that wouldn't be too bad either so really not much to this project I mean there's not much here to use uh, besides I'm gonna use the bandsaw to cut the antler off and we're gonna go over here and pick us out an antler one that we could use to carve and uh, you know some of these are darker uh, they're all pretty good antlers but just gonna pick one you think I want a small one here's one right here maybe we'll use this one we'll uh, clean this one up and uh, we'll make a, a mushroom out of this one so we'll get this set over here yeah I don't think that's not bad I think I'll make a nice little mushroom of course all of them would make nice little mushrooms so we're gonna go ahead and get the getting this one cut up and get it ready to carve okay this mushroom I'm gonna keep about I'm just gonna keep about I don't know maybe three inches of this mushroom uh, to carve because I want to do a pretty nice mushroom I can always cut it down if I want so I just take mine and put it on a bandsaw but you could use a hacksaw you don't have to use a bandsaw and get her cut off I would suggest using a respirator when you do this. Uh, this stuff does stink. It, it smells pretty nasty. So we'll get us a respirator on for the carving here. One thing else you might need is a little wire brush. And I had been uh, using a steel one, but I would probably recommend using a brass one. But I was just using this to get the dirt off of the uh, antler that was on there, been on there for a long time. And I'm sure there's ways of cleaning these a little better, but I used a, this wire brush and just cleaned it up. You want to try to do it without scratching the antler up too much. And the antlers are pretty hard, they're like a bone, so. Uh, you don't have to get it down to bare. You just want to clean the dirt and stuff that was on it off. I do honestly think that the brass brush would work better. Uh, I have a couple of them, but they're really destroyed. Okay, that don't look too bad. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to the belt sander, which this could be done with the Dremel tool. Uh, you don't have to use a belt sander. You could use the Dremel tool. The belt sander is just a little faster. The Dremel, the Dremel tool just does just as good. And what you would do is you would just carve the top down. You would carve all the top down. But I'm going to do it, make it a little quicker and I'm going to take it to the belt sander. Now I have the 2 by 72 inch sanders that I had built homemade. Um, and I also have one that I had picked up from Harbor Freight. Now the one from Harbor Freight would work perfect uh, for these little projects like this so if you guys don't have a belt sander and you want one it would be a good idea to get one from Harbor Freight they're not expensive and they got the belts right there on hand so let's take this thing to the belt sander and clean it up a little bit okay like I said for this process here you want a respirator on because you're going to be getting a lot of dust in the air and I don't think it's good for you so let's get her ground down
Now that's not looking too bad for a mushroom. That's got basic the basic shape. Now I'm going to clean up this end right here where we cut it off and try to straighten that out just a little bit, but we don't want to cut this lip off. Okay, we got the shape that we want for the mushroom, and that was pretty quick. It's a lot faster with that uh, band or the belt uh, sander than it would be if you were using the Dremel tool. That's why I like using that belt sander. Okay, we got our little mushroom, and uh, we got our respirator on. We're gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna start carving out the stem for this thing. Uh, the head of the mushroom and the stem. This is going to have a pretty long top piece and the stem probably not very long. So, And the tool that I'm using uh, is just a flat little bit here. It's not... It's, it's... I don't even know what the name of it is. But I also have them in these round ones. They just got blades on them. Now this in here works really well on carving this. So. We're going to go ahead and start carving this down. I don't do it on a real high speed because I don't want to burn it. I just do it like on the third notch on my Dremel tool and uh, just take my time. I always pull up to the head of the mushroom. See, I want the head right in here, make a little groove. And then take it up to it. Now, if you feel like you can't get these two pieces to meet, you could always draw your line around here. So you can, you'll know where you need to cut your mushroom head. It's much easier holding this up against you than it is laying on this on the table and doing this, but uh, I just want to make sure you guys could see it. Okay, we got the head of the mushroom carved out pretty good. I wanted to give you guys a closer look of the bit that we're using that has blades on it. And you can see I have a big one here and a small one. I'm going to be using that real small one. To make to carve the head. I just wanted to use the bigger round one to show you what the blades look like on it. And then I'll show you what the mushroom looks like right now. We got the head on it carved out pretty good. I think it looks like a pretty good little haystack. Now they don't have to be perfect because there is a mushroom perfect so. So now we're going to start cutting the head down. So what I'm going to do with mine is I normally start from the top and I work to the bottom uh, on this, on carving this out. So we're going to go ahead and we'll start making our lines coming down and we'll work our way down to the bottom and then we'll go all the way around it. See, it's actually pretty easy. It's just time consuming and uh, of course if you're trying to make a little money off of it, you want to have a little pride in your work and do it and do a nice job.
Okay, so we have all the mushroom carved, all the little grooves in there are all carved out. So what I do is just take a piece of sandpaper. This is 150, and I'm just gonna take it and get all the rough edges off of it from where we were grinding. You can go all over this thing and sand it real good. The stem, the mushroom itself, everything. Get it sanded up real nice. And it, it'll start to have a little detail, but it won't get no detail to it until you put some paint down in here. Once you put your paint, whatever color paint you want in there, then you're going to sand it off again. And then that's when you're really going to get the effect of a mushroom. So that's looking pretty good. I get a little air. Clean this up. Okay, now our mushroom is really starting to look like a mushroom. Now that we got our mushroom. This guy's pretty much done. And if you want to make it a key ring, you just have to put the key in it. You do is just drill a hole through here and you put the key in there. So I have some old paint here, some old beige paint. I'm gonna go ahead and tape this guy off because I don't want the paint on the stem. I just basically want it on the uh, the tip of the mushroom here. So we're going to go ahead and get this guy taped off. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get the paint. We're going to get the paint out and we'll shake up. This is some pretty old paint, but I think it'll work. This is, like I said, it's a beige paint. It's just an old, it's not, it's a, it's not even, it's a flat paint. So we're just going to paint the tip of this guy. Uh, the, I haven't really figured out the colors, like what color is the best color to paint them. But we're going to let this dry. And then after this gets dry, we're going to sand that back down. And then the color of the paint will be in all the little grooves and the outside of it will be a lighter color. Okay, our mushroom has had a little time to dry. So what I'm going to do now, well, we guess we could take this tape off of here. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and sand the mushroom head back down. We're just going to take some light sandpaper and go over the head of this mushroom so it'll bring out the color. You can see, I think that beige is going to be a lot better. I, I tried a few, like I did the black because I've seen them black before. And I did this brown and I did not like the brown. So I don't know that I've ever seen them brown like that in there. But I think you'd have to judge your color, maybe do a few of them, and, and find what you like the best. But I think this beige might be the best um, color. And you can see it's starting to bring out the mushroom now. You can actually see the, the little marks in the mushroom. Hear my crazy chicken out there. Ain't my chicken. I don't know where he came from. He just showed up one day. So that's looking pretty good. That's starting to look like a mushroom for sure. Gonna get it all sanded down real good and then we'll take the air gun and we'll blow out all the cracks. Make sure we get all the dust off of it. And we should be able to see a really nice looking mushroom here. I think this one's going to turn out pretty nice. Now you could put a clear coat over these if you'd like. But that would be totally up to you. 
I'm sure the clear coat would protect it. But for somebody who wanted to make a little extra money uh, selling these things, uh, my problem is I can never find a buyer for anything. I can make anything you want, but I could never find somebody to buy it. And of course, I never knew what to charge somebody because you always felt like you were overcharging them. So, I'd just rather just make the stuff. Okay, let's get the air gun and we'll clean it up and see what we have. Okay, nice looking mushroom, I think so. I think it turned out pretty nice. Not too bad. Make sure you guys can see that guy. Not a bad looking mushroom. Okay, here's our little collection of mushrooms that we made so far. This is the one we just got through making. And they don't look too bad. Looks pretty good. But like I said, you could probably put a little clear on them or something. Uh, if you want to protect them. But I thought it was a fun little project to do. Uh, if you got a bunch of old deer antlers laying around and don't forget if you want to make money off these things You can mount them to a little plaque You can make the key rings out of them. Let's go buy you a hundred little creek key rings and uh, You know mount them on there and drill them out But I don't know that you're gonna get twenty dollars out of one of them key rings, but if you do more power to you little magnets people could put on their refrigerator These are the little earth magnets from Harbor Freight uh, pretty cool I haven't put one in this yet, just uh, got to put one in there. But I thought it was a cool little project, and I thought you guys would like to uh, see it. And uh, I think it turned out pretty good. So I'd like to tell everybody thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment if you'd like. Don't forget, click the little bell down there for them alerts on your right-hand side. Till next time.